dynamic analysis of four bar mechanism there is a step by step procedure for performing dynamic analysis so this is these are the steps first we need to draw the velocity and acceleration diagram from the configuration diagram of four bar mechanism then we have to find the linear and angular acceleration of various links of four bar mechanism then we can calculate the inertia force and couples using formula so how do you find the force acting on a link using velocity and acceleration force equal to mass into acceleration acceleration we are getting from step number 2 mass constant when you multiply mass with acceleration you will get the corresponding force or torque then replace fy with equivalent offset inertia force then finally assume equivalent offset inertia force as static force and we have to perform the static force analysis uh, let us see this uh, procedure step by step first we will take a simple problem we will try to draw the velocity and acceleration diagram from the velocity and acceleration diagram we will try to find the force and uh, acceleration acting on this system so let us consider this problem the dimension of a four link mechanisms are AB 500 mm BC 660 mm CD 560 mm and AD 1000 mm the link AB has an angular velocity of 10.5 radian per second here it has an angular velocity of 10.5 radian per second and angular acceleration of angular acceleration of 26 radian per second basically the crank will rotate at constant speed but here there is a angular velocity as well as angular acceleration it's not a constant velocity there will be an angular acceleration which is also given which means we need to find out a tangential component for crank also 2 means crank it makes an angle of 60 degree with respect to crank angle 60 degree the mass of the link BC and CD is 4.2 kg per meter the values are given in kg per meter the link AB has a mass of 3.54 kg so M here M2 crank M2 equal to 3.54 kg we can find out M3 and M4 M3 equal to 4.2 kg per meter but here it is 660 mm so 0.66 into 4.2 kg per meter so meter meter will cancel you will get 2.77 kg then M4 equal to 0 0.56 meter into 4.2 kg per meter 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 will cancel you will get kg 2.35 kg so these are all the given beta parameter angular velocity known angular acceleration known mass of each link m2 m3 m4 known there is no need to worry about m1 since it is a fixed link apart from that the center which lies at 200 mm from a cg cg for link to this link only this one given 200 mm which means 0.2 meter from point from this point then the moment of inertia will be given the moment of inertia is 88500 kg mm square neglecting the gravity and frictional effect we need to find the torque required to apply it on AB so there must be a some torque at this point T at the input so our aim is to find that torque first we draw the uh, configuration velocity acceleration diagram to find the uh, free body diagram sorry velocity and acceleration diagram of 
four bar mechanism. Step number one. So we will start with step number one. Step number one, draw the velocity and acceleration diagram for given four bar mechanism. So this is the configuration diagram of given four bar mechanism. First, draw a horizontal line of length. 1000 mm it's very difficult to draw 1000 mm in a3 sheet or a4 sheet so we will take 1000 mm as 10 cm draw a horizontal line of length 10 cm from point a draw an inclined line of 60 degree then mark this is a mark ab of length 5 cm actually ab 500 mm we take 500 mm as 5 centimeter because 1000 mm equal to 10 centimeter which means 500 mm equal to 5 centimeter then from point b draw an arc of 6.6 .6 centimeter why 6.6 .6 centimeter because the length of the line bc equal to 660 mm again from point d draw an another arc of 560 mm because in the question itself dc equal to 560 given so 560 is nothing but 5.6 centimeter both are cut at a point mark point number c so this is the given configuration diagram now i am going to draw the apply the law of relative velocity on this diagram totally there are three uh, moving components first i am going to draw the velocity component b so this is v b velocity of b with respect to a a fixed so velocity of b with respect to a is nothing but perpendicular to a b this is velocity component one then the next velocity component velocity of c with respect to b i can uh, draw like this velocity of c with respect to b here velocity of c with respect to b perpendicular to cb then the last one velocity component of c with respect to d i am going to draw in this direction velocity of c with respect to d d fixed so i can make it as vc perpendicular to cd you can do use any direction if you want you can use upward direction also you will get same result downward direction also you will get same result so this is the configuration diagram of given problem first we need a known velocity component here the uh, here uh, the angular vela um, re angular velocity of uh, crank known so that we can easily find out the known velocity let's calculate the known velocity vb velocity of link b equal to omega b a multiplied by a b a b known value 0.5 meter omega b a already given already given in the problem because angular velocity 10.5 radian per second when you multiply these two term you will get 5.25 so 5.25 is a known velocity component so let me mark 5.25 first identify the fixed point one and sorry a and d are fixed point so mark a and d as a single point then draw a line of length 5.25 here the direction is similar to this line just place a scale roller scale here and copy the direction and mark it as 5.25 so 5.25 meter per second this is a scale factor equal to 5.25 centimeter next i'm going to move vcb at the end of so you fix this line because a a b known next i'm going to move vcb at the end of b so place roller scale on vcb and move this line here you will get a line like this this is the line we have placed here you just extend this line on both sides so no need to worry about only this direction okay you can extend that line then third one 
VC so this is the direction of VC copy this line here so VC so this is VC here you will get VC and this is your VB VCP now both lines with cut at a point it will go like this this is our cutting point now I can mark this is point C and this is point B now we got all the value you just measure the parameter uh, of A and measure B and C then B measure BC and measure CD you will get the corresponding value if you measure CD you will get 3.9 meter per second similarly measure BC so these are all the velocity component VCB equal to 3.9 meter per second you will get 3.9 centimeter so we can take 3.9 centimeter as 3.9 meter per second so here from this 1 meter per second equal to 1 centimeter so that is a scale factor we are using here so there is no need to mention all those things like scale factor all those things you can directly write answer so this is the velocity component next we are moving on to acceleration component how do you draw acceleration component before we go to acceleration component we need to find the uh, before we go to acceleration diagram we have to find out the acceleration component totally there are three components so let me erase all those parameters so that you will get clear idea two three four first I am going to find the uh, tangential and radial component for two then tangential component for three then tangential component for four there is no need to find the uh, radial component because radial component perpendicular to tangential component but for crank both alpha and omega given so that I can find tangential and radial component for crank 2 you just refer the question there is an angular velocity and angular acceleration so which means I need to calculate the radial uh, tangential component for uh, crank so what is the formula for tangential component alpha into corresponding link length alpha for crank given in the question it will be uh, 26 radian per second squared then AB 0.5 you will get 13 meter per second square then what is the formula for radial component to radial component is equal to velocity of that corresponding link length divided by corresponding link length the velocity of AB known so velocity of AB 5.25 velocity B AB 5.25 squared divided by AB length 0.5 500 m 0.5 you will get 55.1 meter per second square so this is for crank then next I'm going to find the radial component for BC for BC and CD there is no need to find tangential component because we don't know the value of alpha since the alpha value given for this problem we are calculating tangential for crank otherwise there is no need to find tangential component for crank also a radial of BC next we are calculating a radial of BC a radial of BC equal to VBC divided by BC BC length 660 mm then VBC so this is VBC when you measure this value you will get 3.4 so finally you are getting 17.5 meter per second square then a radial of CD this is the last component a radial of CD a radial of CD equal to VCD by CD so where is VCD so this is VCD VC or VCD so VC equal to 3.9 divided by CD 560 mm you will get 27.2 meter per second now we got all the uh, acceleration component now we can draw acceleration diagram so how do you draw acceleration diagram first you need to identify the fixed point so A comma d1 a1 comma d1 fixed set point first I'm going to draw the tangential and radial component of B so how do you draw the uh, radial component radial component always parallel 
let me erase all the term radial component always parallel to corresponding link a radial of ba a radial of bc then this is a radial of cd so first draw a line parallel to aba just place a roller scale on ab then move this line here so this is a radial a radial of ba what is the magnitude of this line 13 so take 13 centimeter as it is it's not a big uh, problem but you see the remaining components uh, here it is 55 17 27 it's very difficult to draw 55 this is a radial component 55.1 so just move one point 5.5 take 55.1 as 5.5 so whatever the value you are getting uh, 50 take this is a scale factor 50.1 meter per second square equal to 5.5 meet centimeter then 1 centimeter equal to 10 meter per second square this is a scale factor so this is 5.5 centimeter then this is the tangential component of B 13 so 13 equal to 1.3 because that that is the scale factor we are following okay now connect this line this is a true acceleration this is point B so B known next we need to find out and this is a B acceleration of B true acceleration this is a radial this is tangential component this is true acceleration with respect to a, a fixed we can take it as a b next radial component of c b where is c b this is c b copy this line from here and place it here on this point so you will get this line so you can use any direction this direction or this direction so we are using this direction so this is a radial component of b c then draw a perpendicular line. here the magnitude 17.5 so 17.5 is nothing but 1.7 centimeter then draw a perpendicular line so here the magnitude unknown then the last one ARCD we can start from this point 27.2 copy this line the downward direction to this point you will get a line here this is 2.72 centimeter since it is 27 uh, uh, we can take 27 as 2.7 because of this scale factor 1 centimeter equal to 10 meter per second square 2.72 centimeter then draw a line perpendicular to a radial of CD now both tangential component there is one tangential component here another tangential component will be here cut at your point that is my point C now connect A B C D so these are the true accelerations if you want to true acceleration of A B C this is A B C if you want true acceleration of A Z D this is A C D okay let me erase everything uh, I will show you only the true component this is B1 C1 A C since D is fixed this is A B C and this is A B these are the true uh, acceleration component of a given 4 bar mechanism so this is how you have to uh, solve up to step number one so step number one draw the velocity and acceleration component of given four bar mechanism so this is the velocity component of four bar mechanism and this is the acceleration component of four bar mechanism now we have finished step number one now we will move on to step number two so step number two step number two find the magnitude 
position and the point of application of force on each link uh, let us consider a four bar mechanism one two three four we uh, in step number one we have calculated velocity and acceleration of each link here we need to find out the force acting on each link not only force the magnitude of force the direction of force and the point of application of force on each link for example you this is for crank you take connecting rod there must be a force acting on connecting rod what is the magnitude then the direction of force and the point of application of force from this point so all these parameter we have to find out so this is what we have identified from step number one acceleration diagram of four bar mechanism now I'm going to mark the midpoint of the connecting I uh, mean each link uh, midpoint is nothing but uh, centroid center of mass uh, in the four bar mechanism the center of mass lies at the center of each link one two three four four this is G2 G3 G4 G represent center of mass for example for link 3 it will be a midpoint link 4 also it will be a midpoint but link 2 it will be a midpoint but in the question it will be given as 200 mm from this point that's why we are taking point to meter please listen carefully G2 value will be a midpoint but the question itself they are given as 0.2 meter uh, total distance I think 0.5 meter instead of 0.25 it will be 0.2 because it is given in the question so now I have to mark these points on acceleration diagram if your point lies midpoint of midpoint on configuration diagram the same point lies midpoint on the acceleration diagram so there is no problem with G3 and G4 so this is G3 midpoint of PC and this is uh, mm, G4 midpoint of uh, link 4 but this is not a midpoint here we need to apply some condition so what is the condition this is A this is B let me take it as capital AB this is point E or capital E AB divided by or AE sorry AE divided by AB AE distance between A and E divided by AB equal to A E divided by AB we need AE so this is point E you take it as E this is A AE we need AE AE equal to AE divided by AB multiplied by AB for AB you measure this value AE point 2 AB AB point 5 so point 2 divided by point 5 multiplied by this distance a b 1 you will get this point this should be not a midpoint so midpoint will be somewhere here so it will be less than midpoint so you just mark that point it will be somewhere here uh, it will be around uh, 2.2 centimeter when you measure this when you calculate AE you will get 2.2 centimeter so that's why I have marked it here this point to this point 2.2 centimeter this is the only parameter you have to remember G3 midpoint G4 midpoint whereas G2 is not a midpoint this is only one parameter you have to remember so let me erase everything then we will move on to step 2 first we need to calculate force so how do you calculate force you just measure this is a or a1 
you measure a g2 a g2 is nothing but you will get in centimeter multiplied by uh, 10 equal to meter per second so 2.2 6 centimeter you will get multiplied by 10 so this is a scale factor we have taken you will get 22.6 meter per second square then a3 a3 is nothing but this is g3 measure this point you will get 5.2 centimeter so 5.2 into 10 52 then a A G four. So this is G four. Measure this distance. You will get two point five seven centimeter. Two point five seven multiplied by ten. You will get twenty five point seven meter per second square. So finally, we got the value of force. Now. What is the direction? Let me erase everything. Uh, let me erase everything. G2, G3, G4. The direction. This is starting point. This is 0. From this point, this is 180. So all three forces are greater than 180. Particularly, G2 will be up to this point. Then G3 will be up to this point. We are connecting this point then G4 will be up to this point so G2 253 new measure G2 to O you will get 253 then G3 238 then G4 222 so this is a force value you are getting for uh, angle angle of inclination of force now so this is the acceleration component a meter per second squared now we can convert it into force component how what is the formula for force f is equal to ma here we got acceleration multiplied by mass you will get corresponding force we already know the mass of crank mass of connecting rod mass of rocker from the given data so multiply those parameter with this value you will get 80 newton 144 newton 60 newton again 180 common so remove 180 from all the term you will get 73.5 degree 58 degree 48 42 degree let me mark all this on this diagram f2 this is f2 80 newton acting at an angle of 73.5 degree then the second one 144 newton acting at an angle of 58 degree f4 42 degree at an angle of sorry 42 degree uh, 60 newton acting at an angle of 42 degree so this is step two to find the magnitude and angle of inclination of force we need to find one more parameter that is the point of application of force we need to find the point of application this is the point of application of force how much distance between this point and the point of application so that we need to find out so I'm going to find out that parameter on step number three but this is the outcome of step number two to find the magnitude and position of force acting on link we need to find one more parameter that is the distance between force and the corresponding starting point of the link uh, we can find these parameter in step 2 but in some books uh, they will find it as a step 3 anyway we will move on to step 3 to find that parameter but this is the outcome of step number 2 we have calculated acceleration of each component ag2 ag3 ag4 these are all the acceleration components once you multiply the acceleration component with force you will get 
I mean mass you will get a force then you can mark that force with the corresponding angle here you have to subtract 180 degree with all the parameters since it is a common value then finally we need to find out the offset distance that we will calculate in step number three step number three to calculate the inertia force and inertia couple uh, when it comes to inertia couple there must be an offset distance which we need to find out so torque equal to when it comes to torque we need i into alpha so first we need angular acceleration of each link first link crank angular acceleration of crank already given in the problem itself given 26 radian per second squared we can take as it is then angular acceleration of connecting rod that is BC equal to EA tangential of BC divided by BC so where is A tangential of BC this is BC I think uh, this is the A tangential of BC measure this distance divided by CB value you will get 34.1 radian per second square then we need A tangent uh, uh, angular acceleration of CD so this is A tangential of CD so measured A tangential of CD divided by CD you will get 79.1 radian per second square so this is how you can find angular acceleration of each link using uh, acceleration diagram this is the reason why we are drawing acceleration diagram so let me erase everything then we are going to find the radius of gyration we need radius of gyration here uh, radius of gyration i equal to mk squared from that i can find k for crank here moment of inertia for crank will be given in the question so read the question carefully moment of inertia of crank will be given so i2 divided by m to 88000 divided by mass already know we know that in the given data we have identified m2 m3 m4 substitute m2 value you will get 25000 mm square this is very very important this is the first time we are using mm square but there is no i value for connecting rod and rocker so what we do we we will find those values using geometrical formula since all the uh, link look similar uh, this is the standard formula it's look something like a rectangle so this is the formula to find radius of gyration k3 squared equal to length squared divided by 12 so l here l represent uh, length of the connecting rod divided by 12 l square divided by 12 36,300 mm square that is the k value for connecting rod this is the k value for link 4 so now we got k value for all the parameters now we have to apply this k value on h so what is this h how do you obtain this value so this is the important part of um, dynamic analysis here we are going to find the offset value we are equating torque with couple torque equal to force into height I mean distance equal to couple h equal to c by f now, what is couple i alpha square then what is force m k again i equal to m k squared alpha squared divided by m a can cancel m on both side so finally h equal to alpha squared k squared divided by e that's what we have used here h offset distance we need to find out alpha 2 will be here h2 uh, k2 will be here then ag2 it's already there in the previous slide ag2 so where is ag2 
here we have a g2 here we have value in meter but we need to convert that value into mm 20.6 meter equal to 22 22600 meter mm 52 meter equal to 52000 so that we will apply here see here 22.6 nothing but 22600 52 is nothing but 52000 again here k2 this is k3 k3 will be here 36300 then alpha 3 34.1 square radian square then ag3 obtained from previous line so let me erase everything so like this you can find out h value for all the three parameters these are all very very important here now we can go to r so what is r let me explain r with this diagram here r represent and the point of application and the distance between this point to corresponding force here we are getting 325 mm this is the distance 325 mm then 297 this is the point of application 297 then 373 this is the 373 so we need to find that value actually uh, point of application of force uh, here G will be somewhere here so we need uh, already G value known 200 you refer the problem G value for crank given so we can take 200 so what we need is this distance so this point always greater than this point so we are using 200 plus so 200 plus equal to that H represent so let me erase all those things there is a point here H represent this distance this is H2 similarly this distance H3 then this distance H4 okay so what we need is this distance already 200 and this distance we will take it as X so 200 plus X that I need to find out and here this angle this is an angle theta 2 that theta 2 is nothing but opposite side divided by adjacent side so sine theta 2 I can write it as opposite side H2 divided by adjacent I mean hypotenuse value hypotenuse value X so I need X what is X 200 plus x equal to h2 divided by sin theta 2 200 plus what is h2 28.8 everything in mm then what is sin theta 2 sin of this angle you just measure this angle and you will get some value that uh, is nothing but 13.5 use pro circle and scale to measure this angle otherwise you can easily find one more method this is 60 degree and this is 73.5 degree force angle then this distance should be 73.5 minus 60 13.5 you can write it like this or you just measure this angle using pro circle you will get this value so now when you substitute all those things you will get 325 so this is how we have obtained 325 now that 325 r2 represent let me erase everything this distance this is r2 g will be here and this distance 200 and then remaining distance x so r2 equal to 200 plus x what is x this is x we are calculating so this is a simple method to calculate or apply the same method to calculate r3 and r4 by calculating r3 g will be here because it's a midpoint so g will be somewhere here midpoint of the uh, 
here but your point of application will be somewhere that's why it, you are using minus sign okay again for uh, uh, rocker G will be here but your point of application will be here that's why you are using plus sign then the rest of the parameter very similar okay so G value 330 we already know that midpoint total distance 660 so 330 so 330 minus something that is the value of point of application or 3 whereas here half of the value 280 280 plus again we are applying same formula uh, let me erase everything here we are applying same formula this is h2 h2 will be applied on the top sign of this angle here you can't find sign of angle like here you, you have to measure it so you measure it you will get sign 46.5 so finally you will get 297 again here you measure this angle 60 then 80.3 is nothing but h3 h4 so this is how you can uh, find answer for step number 3 and 4 now step number 5 the last step in dynamic analysis of 4 bar mechanism now our aim is to find out the equivalent torque torque value acting on crank so three forces are acting on each link link 2 3 4 now we need to find the equivalent torque what I am going to do is I am going to apply principle of superposition in principle of superposition I am going to divide the force into different category this is force acting on link 2 force acting on link 3 force acting on link 4 so I am going to find the torque acting on each uh, force separately this is T1 T2 T3 then finally I am going to add all these three things which is equivalent to so this is called principle of superposition when you apply all the three forces simultaneously you will get a torque that torque equivalent to sum of the individual torque generated by each force I hope you get my point now we will move on to uh, step number 5 uh, we will classify that into three problems sub problem a sub problem b sub problem c we will try to solve a uh, torque on crank for each force then finally we will add all these three force this is step number five it's a kind of static force analysis sub problem a here only one force f2 acting on crank there will not be any force on link three and four uh, we will take the free body diagram separately here there will not be any force on link 3 and 4 we can take it as 0 only forces are acting on link 2 this is F2 1 this is 2 here it's a rotary motion it's not a linear motion rotary motion so when will you get rotary that motion moment when an equivalent opposite force acting parallelly on that link so here it's a rotary motion so when will you get the rotary motion equivalent these two force are equal opposite this is upward downward then parallel these two are parallel just place a roller scale or scale here then move towards this direction parallelly then it will the line passes through this point will be considered as another force because of this force it will create a rotary motion so this is a direction of force because here we are using upward direction now we need to find this distance you just measure this distance then this is F2 applied force what is this L force offered by link 2 on 1 this is F1 offered by 2 on 1 F2 1 so torque equal to F2 into 
f2 value into this value. You just measure this value, you will get some value, just apply it here, then multiply that value with f2. So, 80 multiplied by that distance, we will take it as h2. h2, you will get this answer. So, you will get this value 6 Newton meter. Here, look, uh, let me raise, uh, let me tell you how to find this value. Uh, let me erase everything. This distance is theta, this is h, and this distance 0 0.325, 650. Uh, divided by 2. So, I need this distance. This distance is not the sin theta equal to h divided by 0 0.325. I need h value 0 0.325 into sin theta. Oh, what is the value of theta? This angle 60 degree given in the problem and corresponding this force angle 73.5. Both are known. So, that corresponding angle 13.5. This is an another method to find TA. Otherwise, you just measure the distance. You will get the value. Since you are drawing everything on proper scale, you just measure this parallel distance between these two lines. That is equivalent to 0 0.325 into sin 13.5. So, finally, you will get 6 Newton meter. Now, the question is, what is the direction of 6 Newton meter? Let me erase everything. Here, the force are acting in counterclockwise direction. But what we need is torque. Torque opposite to force. So, torque will be clockwise. That's why I used clockwise. This is very, very important. Finally, we use this clockwise or anti-clockwise to add or subtract forces. Say, anyway, for subproblem A, total torque acting on, I will use clockwise direction, on link to 6 newton meter this is the outcome of sub problem a now we will move on to sub problem b now here the forces are acting on link 3 here i need to draw free body diagram separately so take each link separately first i am going to draw free body diagram for link 3 because here uh, there is a known force first mark F3, this is F3, mark F3, it's already there, so let me erase this, F3, now extend the line of action of F3, then extend the line of action of 4, both will cut at a point, now connect so what is this? This is link 4, this is link 3. Now we are drawing free body diagram for link 3. Force offered by 4 on 3. 4 offer some force on 3. That you have to represent like this. F4, 3. Then connect these points. So what is this? Force offered by Two force offered by two on three. We can represent it as F two three. That's it. So there are three forces acting on link three. Now we draw the free body diagram. We will move this force outside to calculate the magnitude. First, I'm going to move F three because the magnitude of F three known one forty four newton. Move F four. It's very difficult to draw 144 on scale. We will take it as 14.1. Just one division, 14.4 centimeter or 14.4 divided by 2. So, whatever the value you want, you can take. Next, I'm going to move. This is fixed. I'm going to use 14.4 divided by 2. Next, I'm going to move F43. At the end of this here here magnitude unknown so only direction known 
next I'm going to move F23 to this point you move this point F23 what happened so it's not a this direction it's actually upward direction so here we have taken the direction wrongly this is not the direction this is the direction because F23 this is 2 3 force offered by 2 on 3 it will be represent like this but you can use any direction it doesn't matter because see here what I'm going to do is I will move this line both the direction so even if you take wrong direction you will get a right direction by cutting point now both the force cut at your point so this is where you have the remaining points let me erase everything so that you will get clear idea you measure this F3 this is F43 this is F23 we have used 144 as 14.4 divided by 2 centimeter so you, you just measure F23 F43 you will get some value then again you convert that value into force so you do have to use some scale factor okay then next I am going to draw the free body diagram for this link so 3 completed next I am going to draw free body diagram for 4 so what will happen for 4 4 means force acting on 4 uh, f force offered by 4 force offered by link 3 on 4 and this is force offered by link 1 on 4 that 4 will come next so that is a point okay so now we have all the terms uh, F23 already known this is the direction of F23 so that will be acting on link 2 so let when it comes to link 2 then we will draw the free body diagram for link 2 when it comes to link 2 I need F force acting on force offered by 3 on 2 I need F3 2 so where is F2 3 here I have F2 3 so just copy the direction of F2 3 here so this is the direction of F2 3 opposite direction this is F2 3 but I need F3 2 so this is an opposite direction so now we got F32 now draw a parallel opposite force for this line so this is a parallel upward direction downward direction you measure this distance this is nothing but our H2 so what is the formula F43 if you measure if you find the F43 here this is F43 and use conversion you will get 50 Newton force so you have 4 3 50 Newton you have 4 3 50 Newton F 3 4 both are same 50 Newton then F 1 4 see F 3 4 equal to F 1 4 same 50 Newton okay what is F 2 3 you just measure F 2 3 and use the conversion factor you will get 1 1 3 Newton F 2 3 1 1 means F32 also 1 and 3 Newton so here you will get 1 1 3 Newton so now I can find torque so torque equal to F32 1 1 3 Newton multiplied by this distance if you measure this distance you will get 0.16 so 1 1 3 multiplied by 0.16 18.1 Newton meter so what is the direction this is the direction of force the torque will be opposite so this is the direction of torque counterclockwise that's why I have used counterclockwise at this point so finally a force of 18.1 Newton meter act on link 2 in the opposite direction now we will move on to sub problem C in sub problem C forces are acting on link 4 so first I need to draw the free body diagram for link 4 let us take all the three links 
now I'm going to draw free body diagram on this link first mark force F4 so this is F4 acting on link 3 now extend the line of action of F4 you will get a line then extend the line of action of 3 both will cut at your point now connect this point to 1 so this is 1 so you will get a line and and before that extend the line of action of F3 4 so this is force offered by 3 on 4 force offered by this is force uh, offered by 1 on 4 F 1 4 next I'm going to move all the forces separately to find the magnitude of F3 4 and F1 4 first move F4 and the magnitude of F4 uh, we already know the magnitude of F4 60 Newton take 60 Newton as 6 centimeter then close this point next I'm going to move F14 move F14 the magnitude unknown you can take upward direction also no problem then move F34 you can take this direction also both will cut at a point now 6 centimeter equal to 60 Newton now measure F14 F34 and you do the conversion then we have to draw the free body diagram for 3 for drawing the free body diagram of 3 two forces are acting one from this side force offered by 2 on 3 and another one this side force offered by 4 on 3 then finally we will move on to crank I mean force acting on link 2 here I need two forces force F uh, force offered by 1 on 2 F 1 2 and F 3 2 force offered by 3 on 2 where is force offered by 3 on 2 so here we have force offered by F 2 3 so that I can convert it into F 2 3 so this will be same direction so copy the same direction so this is a direction we will copy the same direction here then the equivalent opposite force will be like this these two forces are opposite equal and parallel this is a parallel line measure this distance so what is the formula uh, first we need to measure F14 so find F14 it will be when you measure 3.48 centimeter then according to our conversion 34.8 then F34 F43 F23 F32 all are equal see here F23 F43 both are an equal and opposite so magnitude same so you will get same value then what is F12 F12 equal to F32 see here force offered by 3 on 2 this is force offered by 1 4 so both are equal so that is the meaning of 1 2 this term so what is F32 F32 is nothing but F12 both are same so we are taking F32 F32 value 34.8 this is actually 34.8 multiplied by this distance you measure this distance you will get 0.38 when you multiply you will get 12.9 see the direction that is very very important 2 3 direction like this whereas 3 2 direction will be like this so this is a difference okay here the forces are acting in clockwise direction then the torque will be anti-clockwise counterclockwise so that's why we have used counterclockwise so now we have calculated all the three torques acting on um, crank now we will move on to the same principle of superposition 
we have three diagrams to totally three torque T1, T2, T3, T1 clockwise whereas T2, T3 anti-clockwise. We take anti-clockwise as plus clockwise minus so minus 6 18.1 12.19 finally you will get plus 25 so plus is nothing but clockwise so this is the final answer so finally I can say yet torque of 25 Newton meter will act on crank in counterclockwise direction when a force of 80 Newton on link 2, 144 Newton on link 3, 60 Newton on link 4 is acting on. When these three forces are acting on the corresponding link, this is the amount of torque generated on crank. So with this we have solved a big, very big problem on dynamic analysis of 4 bar mechanism. Don't forget to post your questions in the command box. You can also mention the topics which you expect from my channel. Subscribe my channel and like my video to support my video lecture.